This is my Dell Inspiron 7530 that I got about three months ago. I purchased it with good specs, but a minimum amount of RAM and a minimum hard drive. So I bought it with the uh, eight gig internal RAM. I previously upgraded it to 32 gig and then to 64 gig. And now I wanna put two more chips in it, maximizing it at 128 gig of RAM. This requires you to remove the keyboard and do a little more than a simple RAM upgrade. So I thought I would show that because I can't find a video that does just this on YouTube. I have another video on my channel which shows how to get this to 32 gig and 64 gig. I used previously two of these Samsung 32 gig RAM chips and I bought two more identical chips for this video and for this installation because I just don't want to mix brands or capacities. There's a very good PDF service manual for this laptop which shows you exactly how to do this and all the precautions to take and I'm going to put some of the frames from that PDF into this video to show you where the source information is and then show you how it comes out when you actually perform it. The only tools you really need for this process are a plastic spudger so you can pry away some of the plastic panels on the laptop without scratching anything underneath and a electronic screwdriver and I have a Phillips one head in here because it accesses most of the screwdrivers and I stuck a little neodymium magnet on the side of it because that helps me pick them up off the circuit board. Removing the plastic cover on the bottom is a little bit scary because it is plastic. Um, you simply take out the six screws, which are captured screws. Each of these has a washer on the underside that keeps it from coming out when you finally unfasten it. And then the manual says that you're supposed to use the two open slots at the top of the plastic panel to, as a pry point to pull away. And if you lift on those spots, you can feel the panel begin to come free from the snaps underneath. The spudger is really useful. Right here is a crack in my case because the first time I did this, I put too much torque on it like this and I snapped it right there. So um, now I'm more careful and I work my way around. Every time you take this off, it gets a little easier to remove it. And with the spudger, you can pry loose all the different spots but it's a little scarier to remove than you would expect. It doesn't just unscrew. And this one's not all the way released. So here's the interior. With the one 32 gig RAM chip, which is installed in slot A and an empty slot on slot C. Before you do anything inside, you're supposed to remove the battery and so you just pry up on this release loop and it disconnects the battery electrically from the system. But then you have to take the battery out of the machine using these three screws if you're going to do anything with the keyboard panel because the keyboard panel has ribbons that run underneath the battery. And so if you're just going to add a RAM chip to the underside, you can stop with the removal of the electrical cable add your RAM chip, and then put the cable back. But if you're going on, like we will in this video, in order to install a piece underneath the keyboard as well, you're gonna have to get the battery out in order to be able to disconnect some of the ribbons down here to pull them through to remove the keyboard from the other side. So with that done, I can take one of the identical 32 gig RAM chips that I bought, um, line up its key slot with the key slot in the RAM slot on the machine, engage all the pins, and just push down so that the lock levers snap in place. And that part's done. We could put the keyboard back and, excuse me, put the battery back and put the connector back in place, except we need to have all this disassembled in order to remove the keyboard from the other side. So now we'll pop off the ribbon cables that will let the keyboard get removed. Use a plastic spudger and just pry up on the lock levers for each of these four different cables. and then gently remove them from each of their slots so that they're free to come out the other side without getting caught when you yank on the keyboard. Now we can turn the machine over and take off all the fasteners that hold the keyboard in place. I flipped the machine over so that I could get access to the 
pry points for the keyboard bezel. It's right in the very top here. There's a very small notch in each of these two corners. You can start in either spot. And then you want to pry this piece out without damaging any of the keys. And once it's free, then we're going to go in and take out the screws that retain the keyboard, which are here and here and here. And there's also three screws along the bottom of the keyboard. So there's a total of six that have to come out. Notice that these screws are not the same. The screw across the bottom of the keyboard is very small and the screws that go in the center have a larger head and a longer shaft. So I keep them separate using tape just so I don't lose track of where they are or have them blow across my desk and get mixed up. So once they're all removed then the keyboard lifts out from the bottom and you can feel the ribbons that were removed from the other side releasing like that. You have to work them out very carefully one at a time. You don't want to damage those connectors and the wide one is definitely the most difficult to get out. I had the lift tab caught and that's why it wouldn't come out so maybe it's easiest to get it by turning the keyboard over. So there's the keyboard removed. With the machine turned back around so the screen is at the top, the RAM is underneath this panel. It's just one screw holding it in but it has a small tip compared to the others which were all using a number one screw. This is a triple O. It might be a little small, but it does a fine job of removing the screw. Putting that on the tape separate from the other so I don't mix it up. Use my spudger to get this open. And there's my one extra RAM slot. As I said before, this slot was the first one filled when I bought the machine and it has a 32 gig chip in it too, so there's 64 in here now. We previously added 32 gig to the bottom of the machine a few moments ago, and then this will be the last 32 gig chip. So using a fourth identical RAM chip, it fits into the key slot, the pins engage, and it locks into place. And then we put the metal cover back over it with the tiny little triple O head screw. Reinstall the keypads. So we've got to first get all the ribbons to go back underneath smoothly. Much easier than it was getting them out. Put the top of the keyboard in first. before you try and secure the bottom. Switch back to the number one Phillips head. There's a small snap that retains the addition to screws. keyboard back in place, it's always a good moment to clean out some of the gunk that falls under the keys. Replace the keyboard bezel. And 
and then put the ribbon cables back in place. So just open the locks, get the cable to go just past the little position assurance tabs so that the line hits right up with the connector and then snap it back in place. Now we can put the battery back. Just the three screws. And reconnect the electrical connector for the battery. It just snaps back down and you press down the release loop. And then before I screw on the bottom panel, I'm gonna boot it up and make sure that all 60, excuse me, 128 gig of RAM are functioning before I go through the trouble of reinstalling that difficult plastic panel on the bottom. And as you can see, it warned me that the system RAM had changed. I just hit F1 to reboot it one more time, accepting that warning, and everything seems to be working fine. So the only thing left to do is to snap on the plastic cover Starting at the bottom again, working your way up. It takes a lot more force than you would expect from a screwed on cover. And that's it. So I now have a Dell Inspiron 7530 with 128 gig of RAM, which I bought with eight gig of RAM. I can't remember how much the RAM upgrade cost at the time of the purchase, but my total cost to buy four 32 gig chips was about 130 each. Um, so let's say $520 worth of additional RAM, and it's a substantially amount more than that if you buy it already installed from Dell. And the eight gig chip I then sold on eBay as virtually new. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it helps. Thanks.